Hi, in paragraph 3.10, we're going to look at perpetuities and growing perpetuities. So at this stage, we have only considered annuity examples which have finite endpoints. We have also considered that there is, are a finite or a fix, fixed numbers of payments. A special case to consider would be where there are an infinite number of payments. So in this scenario, we are unable to use the existing formulas because those formula require k, the number of equal regular payments. A typical example of a perpetuity would be something like a pension fund, where you would like to receive your pension on a monthly basis till the day that you die. Okay, so if we look at the timeline, it would look like the following. So this is time zero, and then you get your first payment, your second one, and this goes on and on. So there's no end point, there is not a fixed end point, we don't have the value of k. So to get the present value of this perpetuity, we would like to move all these payments to time point t0. So we would like to move all these payments to time t0. So the present value will be the first payment and then to move it back one time series, time period, it's one plus i to the minus one. Then for the second payment, and I move it back two time periods. And then the third one, it is my payment, and I move it back three time periods and it will continue like that. Okay, so that is what I have here in this formula here. And you can recognize this again as a geometric series. Remember, a geometric series is of the form A, AR, AR squared, okay, and, and so forth. And if we are interested in the sum of an infinite geometric series, so if we want to add all of these, then the sum of an infinite geometric series is equal to a over 1 minus r. And this r must lie between minus 1 and 1 for this geometric series to converge. So if you look at what we have here on the slide, my a would be my first term and my r is the term which I multiply um, a with in every new term. So my r is 1 over 1 plus i or just 1 plus i to the minus 1. So if you substitute your a and your r into this formula you will derive at the formula for a um, um, perpetuity, that is the formula that you find the, also in your notes. So the present value for a perpetuity is equal to the payment over i n. So that is a very simple formula. Okay, and then very similar to this, um, and if you think back to paragraph 3.9 where we looked at growing annuities, you can also get a growing perpetuity. So the timeline would look like this. So there's my first payment. Then my payment will grow at a steady rate g. So my second payment will then be payment 1 plus g. The third payment, and it will continue like that. And now to get the present value of a growing perpetuity, we need to move all these payments back to time t0. So we need to move them all back to time t0. So you can see that is what I have in this formula here. This is my first payment. And then I move it back one time period. Then this is my second payment, and I multiply it with 1 plus i to the minus 2 to move it back two time periods. Then my third payment, 
and I multiplied with 1 plus i to the minus 3 to move it back three time periods. So again, this is a geometric series, uh, the sum of an infinite geometric series, and you can recognize that your a is equal to to the very first term and that your r is equal to 1 plus g over 1 plus i. And now again, if you substitute it into the formula for a, the sum of an infinite geometric series, if you substitute it in there, you will get the um, formula for um, for a growing perpetuity. So the present value is equal to payment over i n minus g, and you will see that there's a restriction i n minus g must be greater than zero, and that is because my r must lie between minus one and one. Okay, so now we can look at a few examples. An employee who is about to retire would like to ensure that they receive a monthly pension for the remainder of their lifetime. At the retirement date, their pension will be provided as a lump sum of 750,000 rands. An insurance broker has secured a fixed interest rate of 9% per annum compounded monthly and determined the value of the payments assuming the first payment is due in one month. So you can recognize this as uh, ordinary perpetuity, not a growing perpetuity. So the formula we have for the perpetuity is that the present value is payment over my interest rate. Um, in this case, we have the present value, it's 750,000 rands, and we have the interest rate um, as 9% per annum compounded monthly. So from this, we can calculate the payment. And this 0 0.0075 is my effective monthly interest rate. So it's the 9% divided by 12. And that gives me 5,625 rands. Okay, so example 51 is the, an extension of example 50. The employee realizes that the monthly pension needs to counter the influence of the inflation and decides that a 0.5% per month growth rate per payment is required and determine the value of the first two payments. So this is now a growing perpetuity and the formula for a growing perpetuity is present value equal to payment over i n minus g. Okay again we have the present value, we have the interest rate and we have the growth rate. So we would like to get payment. Payment. Okay, so the first payment will be 1,875 grants. It's a lot less than the first payment for the ordinary perpetuity. But remember that for the ordinary perpetuity, this amount will remain fixed. It will not grow over time. Whereas for the growing perpetuity, this amount will keep on growing. And then very important also, remember for this series to converge that my interest rate must exceed my growth rate. And my interest rate here is 0 0.0075 and my growth rate 0 0.005. So that condition is also met. Then to get the second payment, if we would like to get payment 2, we take the first payment 1 plus the growth rate.
And in a similar way, you could get um, payment number 12 or payment number 20 or whatever payment you would like to get.